What's up everyone? This is going to be a video on how to use TensorBoard. So for those of you using TensorFlow, you'll know that when you run your code or when you train your model, you don't really have much feedback on what's going on. You might have a little screen output that's displaying your accuracy and your loss, but that's about it. So what TensorBoard is, is a way of peeking in, getting more diagnostics and a better visualization of what your model's doing. And it's really cool. It has some really cool graphics and features. So if you're using TensorFlow, you should be using TensorBoard. So one note, if you have TensorFlow installed, then you have TensorBoard and you're ready to go. So to get started, the best example is if you come to the TensorFlow website and come to the Developer tab, Getting Started, and TensorBoard Visualizing Learning, there's a link to a video from the TensorFlow Dev Summit. So what I'd recommend is watching this video. Um, the speaker does a great job of going through a basic example. And if you come to the video, there's a comment on the video that has a link to the slides and the GitHub. So if you click and follow this link, it'll bring you to the speaker's GitHub. It's this guy, Dandelion Main. So what you'll do is come down, skip this labels.tsv um, file. It's kind of long, so you gotta scroll until you get to mnist.py. So let's go ahead, copy this, and I'm gonna jump over to Adam. I will paste it, save to auto pet bait it. And just to get rid of these linter errors, I'll just do this. So the next thing that we need to do to get this to run, since I'm using Python 3, 3.5, this URL lib will cause a problem. So what we need is from URL lib dot rich request import URL URL retrieve. That's what we want. So then here, get rid of that URL lib part. And one source of confusion is this logder. So it's giving some relative path. So it's basically creating a temp folder in the working directory. And what I found is better is if you just give the absolute path. So I have my folder here. So what I'm gonna do is just put this here and I'm gonna go with forward slashes just because that's how Windows does it. And I'm gonna take that last slash off here. And because I have some slash T's, which represent a tab, I need to put the R in front to make it a rich text string. So now with that done, I want to add that. That's because when we add this to this, I need that slash there. So another thing I want to do is this really isn't the way you want to combine strings, especially for paths. So what you want to use is os.path.join. So we will join um, logder, oops, logder, and um, we'll do that one. So I'm gonna take this X and replace that. And yeah, I'll do the same, oops, on scroll over. I'll do the same, but let's copy that. X. Cool. So now we're joining these correctly the way we should. I'm not going to touch the URL one because I'm not sure if that will mess it up. So now let's see where else we're using logder. So here we're adding it plus data. So uh, let's just do the same thing. Let's use os.path.join. So we've got that. Um, what am I doing? Yeah. So now let's see where else we're using logder. Let me just close this off. Give us a little more space. So that one's good. We've got one here. So let's do the same os.path.join and add that there. And the same here os.path dot join yeah get out of here sometimes the linter can be annoying 
So let's just um, let's copy that so I don't got to keep typing it out. All right, one more. And here we've got os.path.join already used. So side note, always use os.path.join. Don't use the plus this path plus this one because os.path.join will always make sure your slashes are correct. So that's my pro tip. So I think we're ready to run. So let's run this, see what we get. We get those TensorFlow statements. So it loaded correctly, pulling the sprite and the TSV file. Kernel, blah, blah, blah. I used to have a problem with this back when I had my GTX 950. It just, it couldn't run this code. But now that I've got the 1070, it, it should work. I've done it before, so fingers crossed it works again. I forget exactly what I did, but I have to edit this out. And we're done. So it took a little over a minute and a half, but you can see we finished. So now what we do is we can open up a new command window. And what we do is we can type tensorboard dash dash logder and the path to the logder I have here. So that should work. So now this is going to run and TensorBoard server is going to begin and we can go pull up Chrome and go to our local host and we should be able to go to 6006. So now this brings up a new TensorBoard page and we can check the accuracy. Sometimes I notice, well with this one, yeah it only has one shown, but here's the accuracy of the model. You can do the smoothing to lower it and you get like the full resolution or full roughness, but you can increase it to sort of smooth it out. This is the cross entropy. So you can see the value, you get a little indicator, this text box right here. Images, so you can see these little samples of the sprite images. So, oh yeah, side note, MNIST is a data set of handwritten digits. So each image is 28 by 28 pixels and they're, they're black and white. And with this test or with this set, we're only looking at 1,024 MNIST images. So with this, on this tab, you can just, I don't know, it displays three just to make sure you're not getting nonsense. Audio tab doesn't work because we don't have audio. Graphs. So this one's kind of cool. It, it's like a, a flow chart of all the different layers and nodes and shows the path of data flowing between those layers and nodes. So you can see a high level view of it. You can double click on these things to see what's going on inside. You can kind of scrub around and you can always click. Um, there's like a little mini map at the bottom so you can scrub around in it. Um, you can zoom in and out. So let's see. So yeah, you can look at the training layer. Um, this is your optimizer. Yeah, you can really dig deep into what's going on into your model. Distributions, so these are the evolution of your layers over time. So you can see your convolution layer one, convolution layer two, and then your two fully connected layers. The histogram is, I'm not sure exactly what the difference between distributions and histograms are, but you can see this one has this depth, which is kind of cool. So for the final part, if you did everything correctly and your paths are all correct, when you click on your embedding, you should, it should fetch the sprites and each data point in there should be an actual um, thumbnail of your handwritten digit. So you can see we can pan and zoom and each little data point has the, the thumbnail and the value. So two, zero, three, blah, 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 which is pretty cool. So you can also do colors, which really helps because sometimes it's easier to see the color than to actually read the handwritten thumbnail. So this is the PCA, the principal component analysis, which is kind of cool. Some sort of like visualization of where these things are grouped 
but the one that's really cool is the TSNE, the T Distributed Stochastic Neighbors Embedding. So let me just, I can't move these around, but let me click on it. So now you're gonna see some really cool animation going on. <clears throat> so you can see the iteration and you can see the evolution of these um, groupings. So what I believe is supposed to happen is they should begin to group based on their similarities. So the ones should be together, the zeros, twos, sixes, etc. And in what it should be is like since there's ten groups, this should it would be a ten dimensional space, but what it's doing is projecting it onto a three dimensional space. So it um, somehow does that like embedding into the lower dimensions, which yeah, it's kind of cool. So I've noticed that if you have too many thumbnails or too much data, the iterations are kind of slow and then the, the embedding doesn't look as cool because it's going so slow, like, you know, maybe like one or two iterations per second. But with a thousand and a decent CPU or GPU, it can make it look smooth. So you can stop, you can play with these hyperparameters like the learning rate and the perplexity. So let's try this rerun. <clears throat> so since I lowered the learning rate, the, um, the motion is sort of a little bit slower. And yeah, so you will get different results. And just to point out, if you want to read more upon this, you can come to the TensorFlow page I showed here and then click on the embedding visualization. So you'll find an article on, I believe it's called, they point to it, um, is it this one? Yeah, so there's a few articles that go into how this stuff works and how it's calculated. There's another one called, um, eh, well, you can explore around and look at them. I want to find the one that is pretty cool. So yeah, this one called Great Article. So this one's neat because it has some of these embeddings embedded in the website. So for example, I can do this and play with this stuff on the fly. Restart. I can do uh, this circle one. Let's increase the number of points. It should converge to a circle. This one's super cool. It's like this sort of spirally thing. Come on, do it. And well, I guess I'm not getting it. Let's do more points. There we go. That's the one. So yeah, this is a great article. Like it says, you can play with these different, um, tools right in the website. So yeah, that's how to get started. Um, I'll probably do another video on this in the future. So that's it. If you guys like the video, give it a like. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll try and help. I'm kind of new to this stuff too, so I'm not too great at it, but just wanted to make this to get you guys started. So yeah, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Peace.